or you can say homogeneous data types which are ordered or can have duplicate values okay they are always written in the square brackets okay and these are mutable we'll be uh, talking with this mutable of this list and the doubles okay differentiating of them so we can say that it has sliding of the points as a collection heterogeneous or homogeneous data types okay yes. which are ordered right once you write and then you can make it in an ordered way and can have duplications okay and these are mutual and are mutual right, that is fine so what all are the functions inside the list these are the functions okay we haven't started list right have we started it anyone quickly say have we started the list of else Before I don't think so. No, sir. no, no. Okay. All right. So uh, let's just first see that how do we create a list. Creating list. Okay. Let's say I'm creating a list of wallets. So what I'll say is. Yes. Oh. I'm making up. Okay, so these are the wallets. A E I O U. This can be written in this way, or else if I say V is equals to A B C A E I O U dot split. The split functions of the string also works in the uh, list method right you must have seen that okay all right so what else can be created in two ways just a minute i have to make it a bit brighter just a moment uh, all right it will scale up okay. so if i run this both of them right now if i just print both of them like vowels v o w e l s and the V, both of them. I get the same results A E I O U. Alright. Okay, I get the same results. Alright. So the first one is working inside, like what I have created is inside a square bucket, that is a list, right? And then second one, what I have done is I have created a, a, a string you can say with the spaces and not using any parameter inside the split function so that it can uh, make a list of that okay all right now uh, list can be created with single elements like if i write n is equals to 20 so n the type of n will look on to will be getting as a list okay all right so uh, the list can have heterogeneous and homogeneous elements now when we say heterogeneous elements it's like this can have various data types like it can have list it can have tuples string it can have booleans and like in the number integers float and all okay so let's say i'll uh, just a number list i'm taking n again and i'm writing one two dot or let's say true okay and even a more list inside this one two three and let's say a complex 6j 66j okay and more it can be can be there right so this can also be a type where we can say that this is a kind of an homo oh, sorry heterogeneous list where basically it contains different data types all right so these are the things now let's say i'm making a list of songs right or list of interest of any uh, like anyone okay so let's say their uh, name like Name, let's say A is a name, okay, and we have a uh, kind of an interest or hobbies kind of things. All right, 
so let's say songs okay and nature exploring nature's kind of thing or reading all right so like this a man can have a lot of hobbies a lot of things okay so a is equals to or uh, let's say hobbies or uh, interest is equals to i n t r or let's say i n n would be also a keyword i i is better all right so interest is equals to this this is now okay now let's say interest can have uh, more domains kind of thing right so a man can have it is not like we will be having one more uh, we cannot have more interest like we cannot have any consistent interest on anything right so let's say that he got an interest in uh, dancing right so what to do in that case like he have to add on that uh, we have to check on like so what we will say that dancing will be added to the i right so what are the methods of adding something inside a list so there are three particular methods you can use append we can use extend and we can use insert all right what are the three exactly uh, uh, function works on right so let's say append let in the extend and on the uh, what i said insert yeah so these three are one second someone is waiting the fish name chain okay so what exactly append works see uh, when you want to add a single element inside a list you use the method append okay and this append adds the element to the last of the list as the last element of the list let's say that i is having a three elements over there right so what i am doing is like uh, now i am adding dancing to this right so what i'll do is i dot append and the dancing and i'll look on to my i and this would be like songs nature reading and dancing okay all right so let's joining now all right so you see dancing has come in the last as the element right what exactly the extend works this also adds the values to the last of the element uh, but what is the uh, difference between the append and extend is that extend is used to add multiple values of uh, like it can add multiple values at a time where the append can add only one value then it can create a very uh, basic difference like see dancing has been created there same with if i write i dot extend extend All right. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. So sorry for interrupting. Mm -hmm. Uh, say. like Ritikesh come in. He is messaging me. Sorry, he's not typing me in. Uh. Once again, someone is trying to come here. Hmm. Okay, just wait a minute. Let me see. Ritikesh, who is that? Ritikesh, you are saying? I think Ritikesh is here. Yes, sir. All right. What exactly you said? He was not in at that time. All right. So I think you were talking about that. Uh, let's let's move forward. So extend is something like if I write dancing, what will be the difference created in both of the lines? So now what will be the output you will get? Anyone can tell quickly. Like what will be the exact difference? If I run this, what you see is D A N C I N G. Individually, it has been added, right? So that is what extend does. It adds. Okay, someone is there. Just a moment. so extend will add the value at a time right so what you need to do there is you need to create a list all right in that list you can add multiple values which can be added at a time inside a list so what i'll do is i dot extend and i'll say a list of dancing and you see so like till whatever the list was there right after the dancing was there and again a dancing has been added over there okay so these are the things now what if like uh, let's say you went for uh, like uh, let's say like this man has a very good interest in athletics let's say all right so what will be done right in all these interest or all these levels of interest i say the most uh, important is the athletics right so athletics should be given priority right it should be in the first place in the first place that means the zeroth place 
so for that we'll be using insert like what we'll be doing is i dot insert and insert where in the zero that is the first place and what is to be inserted there that is athletics and that is being done now you see your i will find athletics at the top okay so these are the three uh, methods of like adding elements so append automatically add the value at the end of the list and it always takes only one argument okay and except takes uh, like it does the same as the append but it take more than one argument in the form of a list right and in the insert it will add values according to you on the specific locations you want like on the specific index values you want all right now removing elements from a list has got like remove method pop method clear and delete with this you can remove something from a list okay so like let's say a man is having a problem all right so uh, let's say kz all right and this is having a problem of cancer having problem of thyroid and breathing or you can say asthma okay. these three are the problems right so kz we having okay spelling is wrong so, yeah so three of the things have been there right now let's say the man is curing right so one problem has been cleared let's say right so that is breathing problem has been cleared so what we'll say that from the list of his problems or his diseases what we'll do is we'll remove the breathing right so to remove an element directly the first method we are going to use is remove right it removes the specified item what you right what do you uh, like write in the parenthesis so let's say i want to remove the breathing right so what i'll say kz dot remove breathing and see only cancer and thyroid is being left right now let's say that thyroid also gets cured right for that removing the thyroid is in the last place right so if you want to remove the last element of your list you can use a function called as pop it automatically removes the last element of your list right so we can just write kz dot pop automatically whatever the last element will be just it will be removed and it say that cancer is only left okay now since only cancer is left and let's say if the problem cancer has also been cured right so no problems is there right so what exactly is been done now that is all the problems has been cleared right so what we'll do is kz dot clear that is clearing the list no problems right now okay now if you look down to the kz so no problems now if no problems is there no patient will be there right so what we'll do is we'll be deleting the kz okay so delete kz and we'll just run this this right so now if you uh, will run this kz to look on right you will not get any value because kz is not defined now if you will run the kz and run this you will get an error because kz is not defined as we have deleted this all right that will be a name error kind of thing all right okay moving next all right so delete clear pop and remove these are the four functions which will be using for clearing or deleting something from a list all right moving next <coughs> sorry now there are ranges in form of a list right the loops uh, we saw ranges in the loops right similar to that let's say uh, if we have some company names here like let's say zoom in so we have let's say google we have hp we have microsoft okay these three companies let's say or let's say increase more hcl uh, what is that name is ec okay so these are the companies right now if you're using loops over here what we'll do is like we'll just write for i in c o print i what we will get 
Google, HP, Microsoft, HCL, and EC one by one. Every of the element will be written. Okay. Now, if you want to skip any of the element, what do you say? That for I, in C O. Let's say I want to skip Microsoft. Okay. So I'll say if the I value is equal equals to Microsoft, I have to continue. And if it is not there, then just print the i so what do you see google hp hcl and ec so no microsoft is there right that has been skipped if you want to break it there easy what you have to do is just paste if it is such just break that's it okay so loops are very easy in case now a list can be used as various things right creating a positive and negative list of numbers you might got the question there in the examination how many of you have completed that question created a list of positive and negative numbers was there that question i think hope that was there okay <laughs> exercise it's All right, so let's uh, take any uh, blank list, kind of like num is equals to blank, okay? And let's say for x in a range of some numbers, let's say one to hundred. If I have to look on that, what are all the numbers from one to hundred, okay? So let it be one hundred one, let be till one to. What I'll say num dot fn using fn function. So what will be done here is no, appendix. Okay, one by one the numbers will be coming and will be appending. That is, will be adding on to the list. That is num. Okay, so one by one all numbers will be added up there. Right. When I run this and when I look on to my num, I'll see a list of numbers or I'll have to print it better. So we'll be using print function p r i n t and just a moment, yeah. So print num and we see it as one two hundred the numbers right now. From this, if we want the uh, even numbers, what we'll do is the same program and we'll be using here it is num dot append. Now why where we have to append for range of all these if the x is divided like uh, divided by two and leave the remainder as zero. Then the same thing here. Okay, so uh, let's make it as <coughs> even and odd. Like this, even. Else. And let's print the even and then a new line and the odd. Now there are values to unpack expected to odd values. Even okay. So we see all the even numbers there. You can see uh, hmm, five and odd numbers here. Six, one. Yeah, okay, fine. All right, clear. Doubts? Hope no. All right. If you are having, you can ask. Just right. <laughs> okay, so let's have some uh, good questions on this to understand it better. Okay, so like filling an array with a random numbers. How do we fill an array with random numbers? Like we have taken from the range right now, right? Same we can do with the random numbers. The same. There is no such uh, difficulty. Like you can take random dot randint and you can make it like the same thing as. Okay, you have to basically append that random number inside that list. It will be done like easy. All right, and then uh, finding maximum and minimum numbers from any list is just like the max of the even 
let's say and the minimum of the odd so maximum is 100 minimum is odd all right now let's say that if i give a program to uh, take have a list of numbers and then separate the positive and negative numbers from there separate the positive and negative numbers from a list and you don't have to like uh, mention the values like plus and minus and all uh, i say that make a program with random numbers of positive and negative so random positive and negative numbers and then separate it how we'll do that so let's say that from random will import random okay and now uh, let's say a is equals to our list now i'll write a program that for i let's say i take uh, till 7 okay or let's say 10 numbers so for i in range of 10 okay we'll say n will a number which will be an integer basically converting so random okay random of whatever the number will be coming because it will be giving the points right multiplying by 20 and then separating by 10 now you can do with a, any of your choice okay and then a dot append it to be a dot append it to be in the uh, n yeah all right that has been done and in the next line let's uh, we'll be looking on to the what is my a and till here till okay fine so let's create a negative list and a positive list okay now for the values of i is lesser than zero we'll be saying positive dot append the values of i oh sorry lesser than zero will be negative will be negative that append dot i and we haven't created any if yeah for i in a if the i is less than this then this or else you can say positive dot append of i right uh, or we can write the condition lf would be better greater than zero and at last we'll be looking on if we could get the correct result let's see uh, the positive and the negative let's run this so we have a random uh, list that is minus six seven minus nine and all so three are three are the positive results and the rest are the negative results let's run again you'll get random numbers and random results so i made a program that mostly will be getting some negative results not all the time but mostly all right so this is how is that program understood to everyone or having any doubts any doubts to anyone No one is having doubts. Right, good. Okay. This is the chat. All right. Next. Zero. Clear. Everything is clear. All right. Nice. So there is function called as sort. Like when you have values inside the list for positive and negative, like if I say positive plus negative, I get a list of all these, right? Now, when I say the sorting of all the values, what I'll say that, uh, let's say this is a list of numbers. Okay. So if you look on to the numbers, you get something like this. And if I say numbers dot sort. And then look into the numbers. See, we're getting minus four, minus four, minus one, one, five, 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 seven, and nine. Sortings. Okay. 
the same. All right. So let's say I make a simple program from random import random and let's say an OTP code I'm making. So what OTP is to be made like this and um, let's say for x in a range of 100 let's say okay for x in the range of 100 I'll say that what's the time 830 who is joining now I'm gonna wrap okay. so uh, let's say random numbers or OTPs are like random and then we'll say it to be like uh, 2, 8, 7, 6, 5, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, um, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, okay. Now, the code I'm making it as uh, G dash plus the str of whatever the code comes there in the arrow inside of that, right. So, that is being done there and then the OTP dot append the values of code inside that right and uh, like I have to write one more sentence that if the uh, code values lies in the OTP then continue because we don't have to repeat the code right we should always make a program where repetitions are not there or else go for OTP dot code and at last we'll be printing our OTP OTMP let's run this so we get a lot of codes basically Google codes that's it right and I think none of them will be repeated let's count what's the length 100 if we increase this to uh, 500 one, do we get 500? Yeah. So length is 500. All right. See, uh, there is a very small range actually. Like if we increase a lot more, what is the length? See, 4985. I gave 5000, I get like 15 less. Right. Okay. So these are the facts actually. Where the 15 has gone. Actually, those 15s were repeating. So we have short of that, right? We have not taken exactly that. So let's make it again 50. That will be fine. The small numbers will always have a very less values of error precisions. All right. So errors are very less uh, when you take very uh, small ranges. If you take large ranges, you will be having large possibilities of having errors. Okay. You might also get a word like uh, find the longest word of a string. Sometimes programs can be there like find anyone who can tell how to find this. If I'm making a sentence, let's say my sentence is, uh, my string is I'm making a string. I'm saying Python is a wonderful language to learn. Alright. Now, what is the longest word here? Mm -hmm. Cool. Quickly. What will be the longest word here? Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Let's see. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Wonderful is going to love. Greatest. So what I'll say is words are going to be string dot split exactly. Right. Because when I look onto my words. How will I'm going, how I'm going to check basically? So words will be this Python is a wonderful language to learn like this, right? So words will be this. Okay. Now see. So I'll say the longest 
is equals to zero for now. All right, because I'm making as a variable which is zero for now. I'll be having it to be changed. Okay. So for i in the range of one, right? Because length should be at least one. So from one to the length of the words. Whatever the length of the words is, okay, till there. Again, I'll be checking that if the length of the words longest, okay, is less than the length of the words of the I, right? That is the particular word, okay? Then. The longest will be equals to one. How do you say the i? Longest will be equals to i basically, right? And then we'll be printing this. That is the uh, longest word is equals to words of longest. So we see the longest word as wonderful. That is the correct answer. Anyone having doubts in this program? If you have doubts, ask. What exactly we compared? If we write guys the words of, like for like in the length of one to what is the length of the words? If we look on the seven, right? Words length is seven. So if the length of any word is less than the length of this, or individual lengths, we'll be checking inside the for loop. If we go with that, if we say, see, again, I'm. If if you have doubts, then only I'm going to say it. Like, if you have, anyone having doubts in this program, if you have, we can ask quickly. No doubts. No. Okay. All right. All right. Fine. Then it's okay. Like uh, you might understand that, right? So length or uh, like many programs will be there in your assignment. When you look onto the list assignment, you'll find a lot of programs there to work like bubble sorting, selection search, binary search. Matrix with random numbers, uh, sum of elements of a diagonals, and a lot of things you will be getting in the list. Right. Next, coming up to the tuples, right? So let's have uh, all these things to work on exactly, right? So you can make uh, some like how you don't know how Instagram logins works exactly. Like if you say if you have a user ID, let's say I'm making a user ID just like a random one. Let's say a user ID is sample. Okay, sample of Pretty, pretty, okay. And the password of the ID is S2020. Okay. Now, how the user is going to log in? Like, what you have to do is you have to give login a page, like login interface kind of thing. Okay. That is login interface, and we can make it like uh, user entry, user ID is equals to input. Enter mm, user ID. Simple program it's making up bit complex. And if so, what you'll do is first you'll make your own directory. Inside that directory, you will be having a lot of user IDs, right? So if the user ID is in your directory. All right. So basically, uh, you would be having a user ID kind of thing. So let's make it as just user ID. So you have a lot of user IDs. So if this belongs to your user ID, what you have the data of the user ID of the people or the users. So if this belongs to the user ID, then you will be asking that uh, password API. All right. So input. Enter the password.
password will be given. Okay. Now, if if you are, uh, will be looking it on later, like in the case of a dictionary, that the same users, the same password is okay or not. Like for now, we are just not going with that all security checkups, right? So what we are doing is just like if the password also belongs to let's say it has a list and it has a password ID also. All right, so if this belongs in the password ID, then you will write the same thing. Okay, let's copy this, paste, and ah, no, no inputs will be taken. Sorry. So if this is inside this, then you say print login successful or else I'm not making anything right like that so user ID let's say I'm writing my name will be nothing right because I haven't made anything for the else part if I make correct like uh, because I haven't taken any of the thing in the user ID even right now so you can make things you can like append the values first of all like or uh, let's say here it is sample 20 and here it is s2020 right now okay so if i'm running this it will not be done i have to stop and rerun rerun this and let's say sample 20 so it is asking for the password now okay so password is s2020 and enter login successfully okay so if you make any errors it will not be done right so what you can modify here is how you get it if you log into your instagram account and if you check your account activity you get something like there was a login attempt at this time there was a login attempt at this time did you see all those things there how it is done actually so those are made in the sets okay and they use the library of date time so whenever you log in like if i make it as a set what if I make it as a set? Because user ID cannot be there in the list, right? Passwords can be there in the case of a list, you can say. But user ID cannot be there. If you make in tuple, what will the problem that you can never change it? Right? Passwords cannot be changed then. We'll learn in the tuple, that is another thing, right? But the user ID has to be unique in the Instagram, right? So for that, we'll be using set because set do not have any duplicate values. So whatever the things will be done that will okay right okay like if you're creating a new account we'll be having a project based on this and the gmail interface will be building a project and that will see all these things how we do okay for now i'm just stopping this okay I'll stop this uh, yeah. all right okay so this is like how we uh, go with the list exactly okay now let's go with the tuples is something like uh, T U P L E S. All right. So this is also the same having the same definition like it can store heterogeneous or homogeneous types of data. But the problem is that once you store anything, it cannot be edited like you cannot remove. All right. You cannot add. Adding is something like you can add a tuple to a tuple. All right. That can be added. Now, uh, let's say with the list, what I said that uh, if, if, if it is a number like n is equal to 20 uh, writing inside the square brackets okay and printing the n in that case i get 20 right so if i look on to the type of n i get a list the same thing if i say the tuples are written in the uh, like parenthesis bracket what do you use the first bracket we say right so we'll say that n is equals to something like this and then in the 20 and just going with the type of n so it is an integer right why it is not a tuple because it is exactly an integer for making a tuple with one single element we will have to give a comma here the very first thing all right to make a, a tuple with a single element you will have to give a comma after the element to get the things right and that is now a tuple so you can store various things let's see if we have any list i think 
m u m is a list okay so we have a list of numbers here so what we'll do is to convert this is simple you just have to write tuple of n u m so now if you look on to your numbers list we'll find this right so they, they don't have actually all the methods if you look onto the directory of this you'll find it very less see only the count and index method is there like if i want to count that where is the 40 exactly located right so you'll get the same thing 40 only oh sorry index is there right so for 39 right and for the count one right no duplications are there actually because one two uh, things have been there right one two three so your indexing starts from zero like if if it starts from zero then you get 40 there right the things right but what if i like want to start the things from the zero i want to add zero to this so in that case what i have to do is num plus a tuple of zero and this will be like this so this will be added at the last and this is not like get added like if you see your num again because we haven't stored it right we have just printed the way it will look like when we print it see so this is just the way we are just having like if we print how it is going to be look alike okay so these are the functions of a tuple and of a list right the sets will be starting tomorrow completing the sets and the dictionaries and then we'll jump to the, uh, the what do you say projects part we'll be building start building the projects the first with the bank and all we'll doing it right so from a list of projects what there are in the course manual you guys select one of the projects what exactly you want to build right we'll be building a gmail registration page we'll be building a bank project will be doing up with the uh, database project right and you have to choose from your side one or two okay so that you can also have so list questions you have in your assignment completed by nine oh, sorry completed by 10 send it by 10 okay you have less questions on the list and tables are also there okay so if it is having sets and dictionaries to skip that part we'll uh, do with the list sets and the dictionaries tomorrow all right any doubts on the list so we have hopefully completed the list and the tuples part basically so go through the questions and uh, submit it by 10 any doubts you can ask